What's going on, gang? Thanks for tuning back into the channel. So, a couple of couple of weeks ago, I posted uh, my install of my 850-ish watts of solar panels out on my pergola, and I kind of let you folks know that I was going to be changing up my shop and taking some things down off the wall and actually starting to build a better home storage solution slash backup for those solar panels. This stuff is crazy addicting, and this is pretty much step two out of about 20 that I have planned up here in my head. But I wanted to show you folks what I have going on because I think it's pretty cool. And of course, if, if you know me, I couldn't just stick a power station on my little desk here and call it done. So I had to create a box for it and I added some lights and made it, uh, did a lot of things that I didn't have to do, but I thought it would look pretty cool. So that's why I did it. But let me bring you in a little bit closer and show you folks kind of what's going on and what I have planned in the future. Cause I do have a few more things on order that I bought this morning to even further upgrade this home little backup station that I'm building. So let me get some lights turned on so you can actually see now that I... So obviously you can tell here, I am utilizing the AC500 and the B300S uh, battery. This is pretty much the same battery as the B300. Uh, the main difference is this has internal heating on it. So if it gets below 32 degrees Fahrenheit, it will heat itself up. It doesn't really matter. For me and my situation, it's hardly ever going to get below freezing here in the garage in Texas. But it's just a little bit, uh, it's just a newer battery. That's what that S uh, dignifies. But you saw where I connected my solar or my solar panel cable is coming down through my attic up here. I took all of this stuff off the wall. But here's my solar panel cables coming into my little uh, DC circuit breaker solar panel cutoff switch. I've got it tied into the main head unit and I'll kind of show you the wiring behind it. But I built this box, obviously, and I drilled out some four inch holes here to allow for ventilation of the actual head unit. And I put some just some window screen, some mesh in here. So this should kind of help protect that head unit from getting sawdust and stuff that's always in this shop. But I got my solar panel cables uh, just kind of routed underneath coming out and I got it tied in with a little clip here. And the thing with this AC 500 is it's got two MPPT charge controllers in it. So it comes shipped with one solar panel PV cable, but it's got two sets of MC4 connectors. So I've got this one set that I'm not using right now, and the other set I have tied into my solar panels I have out on the pergola. And those all get tied in behind here, and then they just get plugged in right here to the solar panel PV input. It's only one input on the AC500, but there's two MPPTs built into it. And a lot of people don't like that, but I'll tell you why I like it. Um, I've got that 830 watt panel on my pergola that's currently charging this AC500. I just bought some more solar panels that I'm going to be running a completely different string on in my backyard on my fence. <laughs> that's the plan. I'm gonna show you folks how, I, how I'm gonna do it and then run that string separately and connect it into these, the, the second set of open MC4 uh, connectors. So I like having two MPPTs. I, I have seen a lot of people that just wish Blue Eddie would have put one big MPPT charge controller in here, but I like having the ability to run two completely separate different solar panel arrays. They are both rated at up to 150 volts or around 21 amps. So on each string, I can get up to 150 volts worth of solar input, but I, I'm never gonna get that much. I'm not, I wish I could, but I, I don't have enough real estate to put that many solar panels in my backyard. So that's how I'm doing the solar. And I'll tell you guys, uh, there's nothing that I, I've had this for a couple of weeks now, and there's nothing that I've thrown at it that I cannot run. It runs my table saw. My tr I actually have a battery maintainer hook. I actually unplug most of the stuff that I've been running with it to make it look nice for the video, but I keep a battery maintainer plugged into this thing and I run that cord out under my garage and I have a little quick disconnect on my truck to maintain my battery because I honestly don't drive it that much and there's a lot of internal things that go on in these new vehicles that, that have a lot of parasitic drain on the battery. So I keep that, I keep that running 24 seven basically to keep my battery fully charged in my truck. But again, it's run my table saw, it, it's, it's ran everything. And my eventual goal is, is to, to try to get most of this wiring that's in the shop rerouted and connected to this. Now, I also plan on doing some type of transfer switch right here in this wall, but my problem is, and I'm not smart enough for this, and I don't want to burn my house down, but I have a sub panel and my main panel is right there. And I've got a couple of circuits on my main panel I want to tie in, and I got a couple of circuits here on my sub panel 
that I want to tie into that. So I think I could do it if it was just on the sub panel, but I honestly don't want to mess with trying to tie into two different panels on that transfer switch and then connecting to the AC500 in the event that we have power outage. So I'm probably going to get an electrician here, hopefully, uh, and help me kind of figure out how to do all that. But all I'm going to say is that I've been out here probably five times a night just watching the solar panels. And I've actually seen, and I think I have a screenshot of it, the highest I've gotten that I've seen off of those two panels in the backyard, I think was around 630 watts, I believe. And remember, those are flat solar panels. They're not angled to the sun properly. So I was really pleased with the 630 watts. And with those other solar panels that I'm going to be getting, uh, I'm either going to be 200 or a 400 watt array. I can't quite decide yet, but we're going to be adding more solar to this. And then hopefully, we're, we're doing baby steps here, gang. Hopefully, I'll get another B300 battery, and then I'm going to take this whole thing off, and I'm going to set it right here where my trash can is and build like a little rolling cart to move it around because these things weigh... This whole setup right here weighs about as much as I do. It is heavy, heavy, heavy. These are not portable. Um, yeah, they're they're behemoths. You don't move them around. So that's the eventual goal. Get more solar panels. Get at least one more big 3,072 watt hour B300 or B300S battery. Move this off the desk and down there on the floor on a rolling cart. But overall, it's just fun. There's so many different UPS modes on this Blue Eddy, where I can set it to where if I go in here to settings, and if you can see that on the screen, I can go into working mode. And right now I just have it on standard UPS, but you can put a time control UPS, a, a PV or a solar priority UPS, or a customized UPS. So you can really set this thing to where it doesn't take juice from the grid if you have like, um, if your electricity is expensive from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. You can have this set to where it only will accept solar during that time and then after 5 p.m. it will accept AC wall charge after 5 p.m. If it's cheaper for you, there's just a lot of configurable ways that you can make this UPS function for you to literally lower your electricity bill if you want to go that in depth with it. But I just have it set on standard UPS right now. Uh, yes, back, back, back. And you can see right now it's raining outside guys, but uh, I'm getting five watts of solar and 635 watts off of the grid because my battery's at 99% right now um, because I just unplugged my battery maintainer that I had plugged in here to show you. But overall, I'm just super happy with it, but I'm gonna try to, to max this thing out to show you folks that I, I literally can't, there's nothing in this shop that, that I can't plug into it and can't run it. Um, at least right now, when I get another battery and hopefully tie in some more of these circuits that actually run some lights on my fridges in my house. But it's just interesting to me how much this thing will run. So um, just a few examples, because I think it's pretty cool. Let me, show you what, let me show you what I can do with this thing. So here I've got my air fryer that I'm going to be using on tomorrow's camping trip. I'm going to plug that up to one of the 20 amp receptacles. I'm going to grab a 1500 watt space heater. <laughs> trying to do this one handed. It's not that fun. And that's actually, well, that's already turned on. Okay. So that's going to be pulling about, it's going to climb up to around 1500 watts. I'm going to grab this guy too. Heat gun. Okay. Watch this guys. Full blast. That's on. That's on. We're pulling 4,063 watts right now. And we're inputting 1,700 watts from the grid. 1,800 watts is max with my current cord that I have. So we can go into AC load. My voltage is 114.2. My I'm outputting 4,040 watts at 60 hertz. So I've got three of my highest power devices that I can think of that each pull 1,500 watts essentially. Running it absolutely just fine. That is just crazy to me. And again, it ran my table saw, but I, I redid my table saw because I have it plugged into a dedicated 20 amp outlet over there in the corner, but it's easily running 4,000 watts. And I've got another room for another 1,000 uh, watts that I could use 
to do it. Now I'm gonna get these things cut off because I wanna show you folks something else. And I'm gonna unplug these. And get these out of the way. Now, if you'll notice, the AC500 is a little bit different than the AC300. Main reason is you got a 5,000 watt output, but you only have three 120 volt outputs. And then you've got a 30 amp four prong twist. Then you got a 30 amp standard RV plug. And then you got a 50 amp four prong. That 50 amp plug does not output 240 volts. You have to get a second unit for that 50 amp to have two hot legs of 120 volts. You can still use it on 120 volts, but it's not gonna give you the 240 volts true 50 amp. So what I did was I bought a couple of little adapters because in the shop, I don't really need 30 amps, but I want it to still be able to use these plugs. So I ended up buying this, which is the, the little twist lock 30 amp and coming out to two 20 amp 120 volts. And all I have to do, again, if I can do this one handed, is plug this in, twist it. So now I've got an additional uh, 120, 20 amp outputs coming out of that 30 amp. And if I didn't need this huge cord coming out, I can of course unplug it and then just use this little adapter, which is the same four prong twist lock to just another separate 120 volt, 20 amp standard uh, output receptacle. So you can plug this in just like that. So now I can, I, can, I can get another appliance plugged into this if I want to. Or if I ever need to plug in my RV, um, I can run it off of 30 amps. I just need a long enough cord to be able to get it from my RV out in the street up to here. But I wanted a way to be able to utilize these 30 amp and even 50 amp outputs here in the shop if I needed to. Um, and I think, there, and there's so many different of these little adapters that you can get uh, that'll work on 120 volt appliances. But uh, other than that, guys, I've got quite a few more things that I, I'm gonna get planned on doing with this, but there's a whole lot of videos on discharge testing on these things. And I didn't want to, to bore you folks with that. Um, these typically get between, on the AC inverter side, 80% to 82% efficient, but the more batteries you hook up to it, the more efficient it becomes, which is another reason I wanna get another B300S battery, is to make it more efficient. But eventually I'm gonna get this shop rewired uh, and I'll take you through that process and then get that second solar panel array in the backyard tied into this as well. So I hopefully will be able to start to input around a thousand watts worth of solar. That's the goal. I would love to, to make this shop completely off grid if I can. Uh, and, and I literally could power everything in the shop that I, that I wanted to. But this is my new little setup that's, that's in progress, that's still in work. So guys, stay tuned, stick around, follow along the channel if, if you like, because I'm gonna kind of show you folks how I'm, I plan on, on still upgrading this, this setup that I have here, because I tell you, once you get th this stuff working and running, it's addicting to sit there and watch your solar input coming in, trying to figure out what you can run off of it to, to not have to use home AC. Uh, I honestly don't know if I'll ever be able to see a reduction in our, in our electricity bill because I'm not gonna be utilizing it enough, but it's still fun to, to try to, to use these batteries as much as you can instead of the home AC. And I think if you get enough batteries, uh, you can get up, you can connect up to six of these B300S batteries to this AC500. That is, oh my gosh, what is that? Six times three, almost 18 kilowatts, I believe, of the B, over 18 kilowatts of storage if you go buy six of them, that is, that is immense. That thing would be this tall, uh, stacked on top of each other, but that, that's enough to, to run a house for a few days if you have it all connected properly. So um, the, the modularity of, of this setup, which is why I went with it, uh, is fantastic. Guys, stick around, like I said, I'm gonna be upgrading this, doing more things to it, trying to hook more, more stuff up to it. I got the solar panels coming in, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, I'll be showing you how I'm gonna connect that second array to this. And uh, this is just going to be kind of, of an ongoing project. So thanks for tuning in, gang. Thanks for watching. And uh, stay tuned for more updates on my new attempting off-grid shop setup. So we'll see you soon.